Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Dodger here. Welcome back to the Minecraft server, where we have our humble abode here. Really took a lot of time and an effort and care making this very safe, comfortable, well-designed home. It is Friday. We're going to continue mining for emeralds. So far, we're at seven here, and I think six back home. Perhaps seven back home. Maybe it's six. Either way... I'm not leaving today until I have a bunch more, and today we have a different theme. The last two days have been uh, uh, Q&A based. Today is the tough questions. I went and asked both the, the Discord and in YouTube comments, basically any, any what I would consider to be hard or tough questions that you might want answered. Today's the day. And you might be surprised by some that uh, I'm willing to answer. You might be surprised some that people think are hard questions to answer. <laughs> I know I certainly was. Uh, some of the questions I actually took from previous... Sorry. Okay. Uh, previous questions. I'm going to try and do better at uh, moving a little bit more methodically here and putting more care into answering the questions today. So uh, don't don't expect a ton of progress. I did drop off a bunch of random stuff here that I don't need and don't want to bring with me. So I went up and got myself some, uh, some wood from the mine shaft up there. I don't know why I didn't grab those right there. That would have been easy. But uh, I do at least have stacking some change of torches. Does anybody remember where, or did I show it in video, where I left the workbench? Cause that thing is gone. <laughs> I don't at all remember where that was and it comes to mind because it has come to my attention and it has been it has been uh, said to me that I don't have a bucket and a bucket is like caving 101 always always have a bucket on you it's it's probably the most important of safety items when it comes to caving but here I am, bucketless. I heard you. You jerk. Yeah, get knocked back. Sometimes I forget that the bows have a pretty decent amount of punch to them, and you can actually knock mobs backwards. All right, this is this is getting a little bit more cavey. Danger lighting. Hey, first emeralds of the day. Very nice. Uh, what can I do to mark the occasion? Or should I just grab them? I should just grab them. Got them. I was thinking about like just marking them out and trying to light up the area faster, rather than taking the time to uh, uh, to mine them and letting mobs spawn around. Hey, a dungeon. First dungeon too. Uh oh, there's an angry guy in there. Angry guy. Okay, all right. Yeah, I see you. Oh, I can't hit you. You could hit me, I'm sure, but I can't hit you. Let's not find out what kind of crazy bow you got. It looks like it's punch. All right, let's get more light in here. Not bad. All right. Chibi spider dead. Is there no chest? There could be. It could be around here. Yeah, there it is. Not that I'm really that interested in what's in the chest, but... Wow. Hey! A bucket! <laughs> Minecraft heard me. It was like, oh, you need a bucket, huh? Here you go. Have a bucket. You fool. <laughs> you fool. What are you doing running around with no bucket? Hey, more emeralds, too. Nice. Very nice. Okay, okay. This is fine. This is fine. We're getting swarmed right now. I'm trying to run through and, and light some stuff up so that we're not stuck uh, fighting mobs while trying to answer the tough questions. But it's uh, not been easy so far. Alright, we're pretty well lit here now. <laughs> we're pretty well lit. So let's go collecting. I know I ran by some. Hopefully I find them all. And let's answer the first question of the day. This was one that I picked out to be in the in the tough questions day. It's one that I had to put a lot of care and consideration into. Spooky Squid, 
If you could only listen to one album for the rest of your life, what would it be? That's, uh, that is a, a very tough question for me because, and this is not really a secret, music is something that's, um, that's actually pretty important. Let's not go there just yet. Let's see. Yeah, the question about which album is, is one you could, you would listen to forever, uh, if you had to. That was the last thing you could listen to. It's a tough question because not only is music, like, really important to me, it's also very much so mood-based. Like, there's, there's a lot of different emotions that music covers for me, and uh, depending on how I'm feeling, my tastes in music change quite a bit. So, I was thinking about it, like, Maybe the, I've said the word like entirely too much in the past five minutes, <laughs> but maybe the music that speaks to me most right now isn't going to be the music that speaks to me the most in 20 years. What if I'm just in a completely different place? Uh, because a lot of the music that I listen to right now and a lot of music that I consider to be my favorite is, is music that's that's really heavily dripping with, uh, uh, you know, kind of the grungier vibes and, and just the, the the stronger emotions and, and feeling and stuff like that. You might even say... How do I... I guess, I guess the word grunge really kind of covers it, but... Um, yeah, the... The, the the idea of being, you know, stuck with that forever is difficult. So I kind of looked back, and instead of thinking, like, what is my favorite album right at this moment, and that's probably the one, instead, I thought of one that I've liked for, you know, my entire adult life, and maybe really even uh, as a kid, and still relates to me as much today as it did back when I first listened to it, and that has to be Soundgarden Super Unknown. That that was an album that really it really kicked off me listening to uh, that entire genre of music, and uh, it's of course very important because of that. Sorry, Ben. But also, even though maybe I don't listen to it as much today as I did then, or uh, even though I don't necessarily even share the same feelings as I did then, it's still start to finish every bit as listen to Like, it just, the sound of it is is perfect. Uh, there's, there's no question that it's their most polished work ever. Uh, it's probably some of Chris Cornell's best singing ever. And it's just, it's really good sounding, despite the fact, or, or you know, not despite, but um, added on to the fact that it is, it's a pretty emotional work, and it's a, uh, hello twins, twin spiders and twin baby zombies. What a lovely occasion this is. Okay. Okay. Everybody be cool. Close on that list. Even pretty similar, I would say. Uh, another album that really really sounds good but also is you know very significant to me in its lyrics and its writing uh, was hurt I, I honestly had a had a hard time choosing one because all of their albums are amongst my favorites but I chose hurts uh, goodbye to the machine it's another one that I think it was the height of their their sound. Uh, very well produced. I, I'm a person that likes produced music. I'm not a live music fan, uh, but also really strong and, and powerful lyrics uh, and just a really good sound. It's it's very, very good to listen to. So let me make sure I'm still in the mountains. Yep. Uh, so that one was my pick for kind of more of a modern take, something maybe that uh, I'm feeling a little bit more right now than, than I used to, but either one. And we'll go ahead and pick Super Unknown as a forever album. But to 
to kind of grow on that, if I was reduced to only one album, I bet you I would listen to a lot less music overall. Like, uh, as much as I search around and uh, change that up, I guarantee you that uh, I would just really not listen. I mean, I wouldn't listen to that album as much as I'd listen to music every day. So it would it would change how much music I listen to to have that restriction. But I could see me still appreciating that album for the, you know the rest of my life if if need be. Ooh, almost got knocked into lava. Yikes! You gave me a frighten, my friend. Yikes. Well, that's why we wanted the water bucket, right? Also, uh, somebody brought up the point that I've been destroying lava along the way here. Uh, correction, correction, this is, this is liquid rock underground. It has not been, it has not reached the surface. It is not a pool on the surface, and it is not a post-volcano. Therefore, it is magma. It is not lava. And... That is my ridiculous and uh, completely unfounded in reality um, answer to that. <laughs> a emerald. Boop. I was actually coming up here to get uh, some more wood. Had nothing to do with getting emeralds, but found one along the way anyway. Slightly dangerous in that there has been this obvious spider spawner there the whole time, but I guess we've just never gotten close enough to uh, initiate it, which is good. Ooh, that was close. We're fine. We're fine, though. I'm right, gonna be doing a little bit of backtracking here, which means that uh, things should be fairly safe, and maybe we can answer another question. Jimps would like to know if there's anything that I've ever seen done that I wish I could forget so that I could experience it for the first time again. Uh, so yeah, there's many things that are like... Y you always are chasing the feeling of the first time you experienced it, because the first time was so euphoric or whatnot. The thing that really comes to mind for me there is... maybe a little... a little bit um, shallow, but I think probably... The, the answer to this for most people is going to be something a little shallow. But for me, it's the feeling that I had the first time I had what I would consider to be a runaway video. Uh, and what I mean is that feeling... I, I really hesitate to use the word viral, but just that feeling of a video that explodes in success faster than uh, anything else you've done and uh, you know it's 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 a peak it's it's really a rush and I've only ever had that happen twice but really only really 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 had it happen once and to to be honest it's been a chase ever since that and what's funny is that video really in the grand scope and the grand scheme of things not any more successful than anything I do now like what I do now by the standards of when that actually happened would be uh, you know far greater far far greater than than that so it's a bit weird but I you know you I just never have that feeling again, I don't feel like. <laughs> or, I mean, maybe I am still chasing that feeling, of course. Uh, you know, I want I want that feeling again. That's why I continue... I think I'm getting close to the spider spawner. Uh, I think that's why I continue to, to, to try and, and to push for more. Is because I want to uh, experience that sensation again. But... If I could go back and forget that it ever happened and and go back and experience that again, that would be wonderful. That would be a great feeling because uh, it's been a long time. And I think that was one of the last times I can remember feeling very much so truly happy. Uh, like, 
And I don't mean... I don't mean, like, I've never been happy ever again. I mean, it was just... It was just a level of happiness and a level of... Of... I don't know, kind of a relief that uh, have not experienced since. Oops. Why can I not... Oh, torches. Thank you. Guess I'll might as well top off on lapis, too. So, yeah, that's that's what I'm going to say there. There's many things. There's a lot of other things, of course. You might say first autocross ever. That would have been, you know, that I'm sure was uh, a feeling that I'll never get again. Because the first time you do it is, uh, is certainly the most nerve-wracking and... It's it's new, it's exciting, and you know, you never you're never gonna feel that again from it. So that one you could easily say for the same thing. Kind of similarly along the same uh, along the same lines, Gem Knight asks uh, if there's any trend that I wish I could jump on, uh, you know, that maybe I didn't, or you know, a, a trend that was hot and then I never uh, uh, jumped on it and I missed the boat. Uh, that one's that one's really easy. It's this. <laughs> uh, if I had jumped on that trend sooner, boy, I mean, it's difficult to say for sure. Uh, I can't say that I would have been uh, a success. I can't say that I would have uh, um, been any better off now than I than I am. But it really does feel like if I had gotten on board with this stuff sooner, I would be in a much better place. And I probably could have um, avoided, you know, five years that were really a bad five years for me uh, had I gotten on board sooner. And, I mean, there is no going back, unfortunately. So it's not like I can... It's not like I can compare. Uh, it's not like I can change anything. But that's that's the spirit of that question, I suppose. So yeah, that one that one's pretty easy. I don't I don't feel that way about Twitch though. I don't feel like I I mean at least at this point, and this could definitely change in the future. I don't feel like I missed out not you know going you know full time Twitch or anything earlier, uh, mainly because that's that's just not. That's not what I think I'm best at, and it's not, uh, it's not the, the overall dream or, or the passion. Uh, I don't know if my philosophy, philosophy, uh, philosophy is, is totally in line with theirs. So, yeah, that one, that one I do actually feel a little bit better about. So I don't have major issues with that. Is there, oh, Gem Knight again. Is there a job that I wish I had kept with? Not really, because I've only ever had, for real, like if we're going to talk real jobs that, you know, you have a 1040 for, I really only ever had one job, honestly. Uh, I was with Home Depot from, I think I just, I think I was getting close to 11 years. Uh, and that was it. That was, that was my job for... A decade of my life and no <laughs> no I don't wish I had stayed with that the only the only wish I have there is that I had quit sooner because it was such a it was such an improvement on my quality of life to leave uh, I, I really should have left a lot sooner so that's there's the only regret with that is that I wish I had left sooner Uh, let's see here. Cinnabon. What's the most important decision in your life that in retrospect you believe you've chosen wrong? Uh, not that last one. <laughs> uh, maybe, I mean, these are all kind of on a similar theme. But, um, maybe in that, uh, I didn't choose that sooner. But, the biggest mistake for me, the, the largest decision that I messed up on, uh, was for sure going to college. And uh, maybe, maybe even not, um, maybe I regret not putting my foot down on that one. Maybe I, I regret not trusting my own judgment that college probably wasn't for me. And I, I kind of let other people, you know, steer me 
and convince me otherwise. And uh, they don't know. They didn't. <laughs> it's not like I'm I'm mad at anybody. I'm mad <laughs> that uh, people tried to steer me that way because it's 100% true that if I had been you know a successful college student, I could have been in a lot better place in life. And uh, it's a it's a perfectly reasonable and acceptable goal. I don't discredit anybody that uh, chose to go for the college lifestyle, and uh, I'm sure there's plenty of people that I know that are, you know, way better off in life for doing so. It just wasn't for me. It just didn't end up being the thing for me. <laughs> Almost lost some diamonds there. Um, but yeah, that's yeah, that's kind of an is what it is deal. Uh, they wouldn't have known. I didn't know, but. I made the wrong decision. Uh, and along the same lines, uh, Zikar wants to know, you know, what happened with college? What what went wrong, I guess, is the question. Why did you end up not getting a degree? Uh, and all that stuff. And I and I do speak pretty often about, you know, how, how poorly I feel towards college and the university system and whatnot. Uh, and really what happened was... I just ran out. I ran out of energy for it. I ran out of I ran out of time, I think, uh, and and most certainly ran out of money. The the financial impact that college had on my life was was dramatically negative, and it it eventually overwhelmed me, and I and I couldn't do it anymore. Uh, but it also it was also emotionally overwhelming. Like I just. I couldn't handle the the constant failure and the constant uh, the constant feeling that it, I didn't fit in that I wasn't I wasn't right for this you know uh, it never felt I never once felt like I was doing the right thing and I was you know moving in a in a good direction with that kind of stuff um, starting with mechanical engineering and then moving over it's about to get spicy. Uh, to the graphic art stuff, I think was a was a positive direction. Moving out of engineering, it was, you know, I kind of transitioned towards finally doing something that I was passionate about, and I felt good about. But then it just didn't end up working out. Um, again, kind of financially. And I, I've spoken about the, the problems with uh, the program and the fact that I never got actually allowed into the graphics arts program. And by that point, I was just so completely burnt out. I, I, had, I had no energy for it anymore. Finally, another emerald. Um, and that was that. That was it, it was it was definitely a fizzle more than a bang, <laughs> you know. Uh, I didn't go out in a blaze of glory. I went out in, you know, in a, in a fade with that kind of stuff. Which is, uh, it's it's very disappointing. I do feel, still, today, uh, disappointed with that stuff. Um, I'm, I'm disappointed that uh, I feel like I let myself down quite a bit. I, I certainly feel today still. Hello, Mr. Caliban. Uh, I still feel today that uh, I let... You know, my parents down and that kind of stuff. But, at the end of the day, you kind of have to take hold, you have to kind of take stock in your own feelings and your own uh, happiness. And, to a large degree, that's what I did. Which makes me feel better. You know? It makes... It makes making that decision feel right. Uh, even though... I have negative feelings towards it. I still do feel better and happier with my with my day-to-day -day life making the decision that I made. So that that eases the the frustrations there for sure. Is this that same ravine again? Oh, new ravine. I think there was some other questions along that line, but they're not in this order. Oh, actually it is in this order. Good job, Cone. I really didn't plan on putting these in order, but it's happened. Uh, Cubic. Uh, how much of what you do on YouTube do your parents hear about or know about? Um, 
interesting question, and I think probably one of the more unique takes here is that uh, pretty involved, actually. Um, Dad's pretty into it. It took him a long time to come around to it. I think I think it took him a long time to realize how important it was to me, and it took him a long time to realize, you know, what it actually meant, and uh, what it involved, um, and that it was a legitimate thing, because it's new media, man, <laughs> uh, and it's, it's, you know, just dramatically different from, you know, the, the standard career paths or whatnot. Uh, we're very, very close to being out of Emerald Branch here. But, um, you know, eventually he certainly did come around to it and has become integrated into uh, our our community for sure. And I do very much so appreciate that. Uh, Mom kind of stays more on the, the outskirts of it, which is totally fine. I, I never, I never really invited nor shoot away either one of them uh, to be involved in it. They certainly knew about it and and knew that this was a thing that I was doing, but I just didn't outright, you know, uh, I didn't want to put any pressure onto them to, to be involved with it because I do know that it is, you know, it's a weird and wacky thing that uh, it's honestly just hard to understand. It's hard to to get a grip on. So I'm happy for their involvement in whatever way they that they have. Uh, I will say it's very awkward. It's very weird for me, especially since you know this this format, this this um, medium has been probably one of the biggest ways of me opening up because I felt prior to this that I lived a pretty closed in life. I didn't really share a lot of my feelings or uh, you know, thoughts day to day, that's, that's not something that I commonly did. My thoughts were very much so, you know, in my head, and very, very close friends would hear them. That was it. Uh, that's a, that's a tough way to live your life. But now that I, I kind of use this platform to, to be more open, it is a little awkward that, you know, they're there, or especially, you know, dad's <laughs> tuning in, and... Uh, you know, here's this stuff. I just looked that Enderman in the eyes, but he did not get mad. He's a real Frenderman. But yeah, that's uh, that was a that was a big factor for sure. Uh, that was that was an interesting development. I think there was more parts to that. You have a childhood memory of your parents completely disappointing you. That's a hard question, isn't it? That's that's one that I bet you you wouldn't expect an answer from, and I bet you not many people uh, would answer. Man, no emeralds again. We might be too high here. Oh, uh, barely. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna answer that, even though it's very possible that uh, they may hear the answer to this. Honestly, it's not even a, a real tough answer. It's it's not anything direct. It's not like a uh, a particular moment. And sure, there was you know stupid little things. Hello, silverfish. There were toys that I didn't get, or there were uh, there were silly little things like that that um, I'm sure at some point I wanted. A Bicycle, and I didn't get a bicycle. I'm sure there's stupid stuff like that that absolutely does not mean anything to anybody. Uh, it was just, you know, uh, that's how kids' brains work, basically. But the the thing that I could come up with and the, the reliable answer in my head was that, uh, and, and it's, it's equally ridiculous, like it's it's totally ridiculous for me to feel this way, but there was definitely an era in my life where I felt real disappointed that they would never uh, take stock in my interest in racing and they never, uh, you know, went to any length to try and make something happen there, try and make it work. But that's, it's real silly. 
I know now. I didn't know then, but I know now why. Uh, obviously, we did not grow up in a wealthy situation, and it's actually a very, a very tough situation. And I only made their lives more difficult because I made their lives more economically challenging due to my health troubles growing up. I'm sure that um, I... I've never actually directly asked this question, but I would almost bet there is still debts. First baby spider. And he poisoned me. I would bet there is still, at this point, some debts from from my childhood uh, that they have. Uh, like, trying to make that point really clear. I, I certainly do understand now that uh, I put them in a in a bad <laughs> bad place. Not like I I feel like I'm guilty for it, but um, that that's just the way it was. But that's why I'm sure a large part in why they never even mentioned it or or, or brought up the fact that really what I think I wanted to do in my life was be a damn race car driver. <laughs> but uh, I never got the opportunity, and by the time I could do it on my own, it was too late. Um, no, yeah, that, that's something that legitimately stuck in my brain for a long time. Like, I, I felt angry about that. I mean, not angry, not like, uh, no, no, no hatred or anything like that. But it's something that, that I certainly thought about a lot for, for a long time. This is, this is dicey. He's my bow enough. Well, he's in my face now. I should use it. I should use the sword. Why won't you die? How many hits did he take? Also, we're out of food. That's light. Let's shed some light on the situation. Use your uh, your shield. Look behind you. Make sure you're not getting snuck up on. How is he shooting over that creeper, by the way? That's some hacks. Oh, my shield was up. What a cheaty guy. Look at him! Shooting backwards. What a cheater. Fight fair, loser. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I think I, I think that's pretty much the answer to that question. Uh, on the flip side, most fond memory? I, yeah, again, I don't really have a, a direct one for that one either. Uh, like... There wasn't a direct, like, single, momentary, um, you know, thing of, of being disappointed in them that I could really pinpoint, you know, being, uh, you know, most fond. I have a lot of fond memories with, with both of my parents, and uh, most of them, you know, stem around things we did or, uh, you know, different trips or experiences. There were certainly some things that I was always very grateful for. Uh, I was always very, very happy that, you know, my family worked that way. And they, they tended to just work around respect. It seemed like to me, a lot of the parents of the friends of mine did not show their kids a lot of respect. And they never respected their opinion because, you know, you're just a stupid child. Uh, that kind of attitude. I never felt that way growing up. I always felt like, even though I'm sure my opinion was you know, silly and stupid because I was a kid, I never felt like they they just you know brushed off what I said, uh, which is a which is a very positive thing for sure, uh, and it, it's certainly a value that I will uh, cherish moving forward. Should Something crazy happened in my life. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's kind of a cop-out on that question, I suppose. But hopefully it's a good answer. Emeralds, please, by the way. We're in mountains. And we're barely low enough. We are kind of on the edge. But seriously. Seriously. Next up... Uh, Simon, kind of on an extension of that question of, uh, uh, do the parents, uh, do my parents, you know, show any interest? 
uh, wants to know, do my parents, older members of the family, get video games? Uh, kind of a difficult question there, because I don't have a lot of older family. Unfortunately, it seems like uh, living a good long time is not really our family's um, strong suit. <laughs> um, and there, I mean, like, my last living grandparent towards the end of her life, I would say probably... Probably not really. Didn't really get it. Uh, didn't really show any interest in it in any huge degree. Um, uh, an interesting memory related to that, though, is the fact that um, my grandfather was actually pretty interested in very, very early video game stuff to do with computers. And he actually kind of got our family into early computing. And I can fondly remember him... You know, messing around with, uh, we're talking like, uh, Commodores, Amigas, things of that nature, you know, early, you know, Windows 3.1 stuff, uh, and earlier, um, very, very early computing, and he actually did, you know, have interest in the video games. I mean, most of it was like war games, because, you know, <laughs> older, older, uh, male American, <laughs> but... I can say that, yeah, there was there was definite interest in there. Uh, unfortunately, he died long before, you know, the modern era of gaming. Uh, and way, way, way before, you know, this kind of stuff. Uh, you know, <laughs> basically, you know, making careers out of out of video game content. That, that wasn't even... That wasn't even a, a dream, or wasn't even a, an idea that someone could propose to someone. But... I feel like maybe he would have had a little bit better of understanding. Uh, for the parent side of things... Ooh, buddy. Are you lagging too? Please don't lag. We got slowness. Alright, I hear a baby zombie. Oh, behind me? Where are you at? Are you tracking me through the walls? Is that what you're doing? I'm gonna need to make some bread. Let's do that here. Getting low on the food. And only 10 pieces of bread left. We just need to find a couple more diamonds, really. I think we're, like, too short at this juncture. Or not diamonds. Emeralds. Did I say diamonds or did I say emeralds? I think I said diamonds. Hey! Very nice. That witch was hiding one. Cool. All right. Well, that gets us closer. I have so many more questions, though. So many more questions. Um... Maybe we'll have to talk on the way back. This might be a very, very long, long episode. Get dig to that baby? We might have to. Go down. Nope, that's just a lighting error. Um, yeah, on the parent side, mom was always very much so into games growing up. Was more on the console side of things. Uh, my first Let's Plays were uh, watching Ducks, my brother, and my mother. Um play uh, Nintendo games and stuff like that because I was too young to really grasp them but I really did love watching them you know play through Super Mario and, and things of that nature uh, my first let's plays were were quite good indeed so yeah there was that uh, dad never too much and and still to this day not not too much but I think he generally Tries his best to have an understanding, <laughs> obviously, since uh, he watches along with us here. Let's see. Jim, uh, here's a, uh, a quickie. When did you start to hate cheese? Uh, and why? Very young. Very young. And honestly, hey, 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 yeah. Here we go. Got the right pick. 16. If we have 8 at home, this is enough. But I don't know that we do. Let's try to get 18 if possible. Um, There's another cave here is why I'm digging this way. I can hear it. I can smell it. Yeah, the cheese thing, it happened young, but I can't tell you why. And it's it's a very much so, like, um, silly kid brain thing again. There was no logical reason for it. I just... I was a peanut butter and jelly kid, not a cheese kid. And through that, I just developed, and I think, I, I can't tell you, like, when it happened or why it happened, but somewhere down the line, 
I grew a distaste for, like, the yellow cheese. And the yellow cheese, like American cheese, you know, fake cheap cheese, um, is, is the main thing that I ended up kind of focusing on and not liking and got into my head of, you know, not liking cheese. Uh, and that all just stemmed from there, basically. The entire hatred of cheese came from that. Uh, could I be convinced? Could I be sold on cheese again? Maybe. You know, maybe in the future that could that could come around for me. But it's so ingrained in my brain now that I don't like it that I have a predisposition to not like it. Oh. How are we alive? How are we alive? And we took very few hearts of damage there. My water bucket went into the lava and 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 took the lava, but the water bucket did save us. Oh my. <laughs> my heart. My heart. <laughs> I can't, I can't even right now. Oh, man. Woo. <laughs> oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. See, that's why I hate cheese. Look what this cheese discussion has done to me. It was all cheese's fault. I just want the water. That's, that's all I want out of this. Put that down there. I just need water again. Water. I need water. Yikes. That was crazy. That was very crazy. We must be getting close. Yeah, is it there? Got it. Goodbye, lava. You know what? I mean, magma. This is magma, remember? This is not lava. Whoo, buddy. See, that's why we don't respect Mag. <laughs> we only respect the lava pools. Yikes! That was that was very close. I'm sorry, everybody, for your uh, your hearts. <laughs> oh man, that was insane. We're not out of the woods yet. This is a dangerous ravine. Dangerous ravine. There is things everywhere. Yep. That's what I was waiting for. Find me. Find me all along. I need a I need a reset. My brain needs a reset too. Uh, looks like there's some caves around here though that we haven't explored. I thought we were going into the ravine we already explored, that's why I was so confident moving forward. But it is not. It is not the same ravine. This is a very new place. A new place with no emeralds, I would like to say. All right, where am I? I had to take a, not really a quick break at all. I had to stop recording because this has taken so long that I got into stream time. So this is, this is post stream and I still have a lot of questions left. So we're gonna dive back into it here. Let's see, last one I had done is the cheese one. Let's see here. Next one up on the hard questions is from Georgian. And this one's legitimately a hard... Why does that keep happening? Why has... Why has life done this to me? <laughs> this... This moment right here is harder than, than any of the questions so far. Might as well just throw that away. <laughs> I was really just trying to find this cave. As you can tell, I've been digging around trying to find it. That's where I, I left off. I don't know where these zombies are, though. Uh, Georgian's question, though, is if you either had to sell your whole PC rig or all of your cars in order to secure money for rent, which would it be? Kind of... A multiple bladed question there because if I sold all of my PC equipment how would I make money 
<laughs> so if I did that to make rent, well, what's the point really? Because I'm not then going to be able to make money to make rent the next month. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to sell the computer stuff. On the flip side though, you said I you said you said ouch. You said I had to sell all of the cars. Well I'm gonna be real with you here. At this juncture, I would say I am more likely to go homeless than to sell red. <laughs> I would not sell the 240. Now, honestly, selling the Audi or getting rid of the Audi uh, as my daily driver was something I considered for a little while in the ways to get by mentality. Alright, let's take care of this guy. Got him. Alright, that's where everybody is. I don't know how that skeleton ended up dying there. It's very dark back there, though. He exploded. That's fine. Alright, well, let's hope that goes places. Looks like it'll go that places. Go places that way, too. Ooh, this is gonna be rough. Because <laughs> now I've been... I've been at it for... Like, six or seven hours <laughs> of being at the PC recording or streaming. But... Let's see. What was I saying? Oof. My mind is all sorts of distracted now. The... Uh, the thought of getting rid of the Audi crossed my mind because it's like, well, that's, you know, 200 and something dollars a month that I could uh, get rid of. And given my current situation, I don't really necessarily need a daily driver car. I could easily live with, you know, something less reliable and cheaper. So that wasn't really uh, a priority for me to keep it. But it really does make me happy. Like, it's probably the daily driver that I've been most happy with. So, uh, it's hard for me to think about, you know, letting go of that. Um, but if it came down to it, and it, it meant, you know, doing that to be able to keep doing what I'm doing, then yeah, I would probably do that. I wouldn't have any huge problems with that. But if it was between selling 240, selling selling red and um not paying rent not paying rent oh buddy hi hello friend Ooh, that was close that was real close oh look at your armor aren't you a fancy boy let's not get knocked back into the lava there huh let's let's not do that Let's try and find a safer way into this place real quick. Hoping this is gonna open up into a decent cave, because I'm having a hard time finding one now. Ooh, that was close! Oh, man, we're almost good. How many does this give us? If I hadn't gotten rid of that one, 17, I want 18. I think 18 is gonna be the magic number. Alright, that doesn't actually go the way I thought it would. This is a completely different cave, but with a lot of mobs. Alright, they're fighting each other. That zombie with full iron, though. He's crazy. He's real crazy. Alright. We really need to be done here soon, because we are dangerously low on food. They can't drop down here, right? Okay. Is this... Yes, that's where Mr. Um, iron Zombie is. You better drop something. All that armor. It's gotta be protecting something. Nope, nothing. Just some flesh. Right, digging towards some more down here. Along those lines, Gem Knight. No, sorry. Uh, Powers asked, Would you rather have a pristine Brat or a pristine Mark II MR2? This is a very specific question because Powers knows my car interests very well. And the answer to that is the pristine Mark II MR2. Because I don't really want a pristine brat. I want a brat that I can restore uh, and have as a fun project. That's that's very much so high up in my priority list at the moment. Is is finding uh, one of those. And like I said, I want it to be... It's a project. I want something to, to fix up. 
kind of in the same lines as the super project, but something that's, you know, actually mine uh, and will actually be appreciated. So that's, uh, that's the logic there. And it's easy to choose the MR2 because if I did have to get rid of the of the TT and I had to choose another daily the only car I could think of that I would go for is another Mark II MR2 that was prior to the TT my favorite daily driver uh, I really 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 enjoyed that car but ended up getting rid of it because it itself was kind of a project all right, we're good. Uh, and at the time, I didn't have room in my time schedule to afford another project, or you know, I didn't have the money to afford another project. Uh, it was it was in the era when I was still autocrossing red pretty regularly, and uh, I needed money for, for tires on that and whatnot, and keep it going. So it just I just didn't have room in my life for it, which was sad because I really liked the car. Um, so if I had to go back to having another, you know, normal, we'll say used second-hand car for daily, I would definitely look for another one of those. Boy, there is another cave here somewhere. They're all around. It almost feels like there's a zombie dungeon around here, spawning all of these. We think they're above us or below us? Boy, it feels like they are right here. Oh, they are. Oh, he's got a rail, so that must be back into the mine shaft. Let's see. How can we do this somewhat safely? Oh, that looks like it's a big open space. That's dangerous. Hello. Yep, yep. I told you. Oh, jeez. Creeper Den! <sighs> How many creepers was that? That had to be at least six, right? Oh, there's more. There is more. <sighs> I don't have the, the, the wherewithal for this right now. Oh, that looks like a nice cave opening now. Yeah, that's some, that's some good, ooh, look how open it is up here. There has got to be some emeralds around. There has to be. This is, this is prime territory. All right, it's too high here. So we're going to block that. Let's actually block that off. <laughs> we don't, we don't want to go anywhere near here. We don't need anything from here. Just, just go away. Go, go away, cave. <sighs> okay. <laughs> oh, man. I do have that golden apple to use, need be, if we get in a real precarious situation. Alright, we answered the MR2 one. Uh, oh man, this is one that's been coming up a lot lately. I actually had a discussion on beefs, uh, or not beefs, but the first car podcast uh, Discord about this, and we've been having one on our Discord, and it's the electric car debate. Uh, are electric cars the future of, I think, we sure wanted to know if it was the future of motorsports. Uh, and in general, it comes up a lot for, you know, just cars in general, if that's the future of, of personal transportation. Scary noises. Uh, but we'll, we'll try to include all of those in that, uh, whether it's for, you know, a personal car or whether it's motorsports. It's a, it's a good looking cave, but we haven't seen nothing yet. Oh, we're in forest, that's why. Oh, we've we've finally done it. We've exceeded the boundaries of the mountain. Oh, the mountain is back here, though. Hmm. Bummer. That's a real bummer. Well, let's go this way, then. So, my opinions on this... Let me... Let me start with... My opinions on this are extremely biased. <laughs> I am personally a person with lots of vested interest in combustion engine stuff. Uh, internal combustion engines and, and whatnot. Because uh, it's, it's 
such a big part of my life and uh, always has been such a big part of my life to, you know, work on, be around cars and the cars I've always been around are internal combustion cars. So I have a lot of, of bias in that regards in this topic. Uh, do I think electronic cars or electric cars, battery powered cars are the way of the future? For the time being, yes, it does seem that way. For for the situation we're in, absolutely. Uh, I heard another one somewhere. I don't see any other technology creeping in to uh, resolve the issues of internal combustion anytime soon. I don't, I don't see anything else on the horizon there. So, yeah, basically, that's that's where we're at. Uh, and I do think it is important, and I do think we need to look for other options, too, because it, it is time. And that's something that, that Catherine was kind of asking about uh, in the in the comments was, um, given the planet is dying because of stuff that we've been doing to our planet here, would you ever reconsider your hobby in cars and racing? Uh, another tough question. Would you... Int uh, oh, wait, no, sorry. This was... The first part of this question was on topic. The second one is a different topic. So, yeah. I mean, the two are... are definitely intertwined. And it is something that I have thought about. Let's see if there's any mobs. I have some mobs this way. Uh, and that is, you know... The hobby that I'm part of is what you would consider to be anti-Earth. <laughs> it's anti, you know, uh, well-being of our planet and whatnot, for sure. Um, for me personally, though, I just feel like the impact of motorsports and the automotive hobby is actually so small in the grand scale of things that I have a pretty easy time justifying it. Happy days! Happy days, happy days. This is 18. Yes, it is. Oh, and it was somewhere I was already at. Okay, so the question is, how do we get out of here? I think I'll probably dig up. I think that's, this is time. I think we've been here long enough. It's time to see where we are in the world and uh, just how far we've we've gone. And we'll make our way out of here. Let's put this on the bar just in case. Uh, and I'll continue to answer this question. We still have to make our way home and whatnot. Um, but yeah, if we could... If we could get the commuter cars, the people that use cars purely for utility, um, people that use cars for commuting, just getting to work, and, and they are nothing more than... Did I lose my shovel somewhere? I did. I probably threw it on the ground somewhere. Well, that's a shame. That's a shame. What a weird casualty of this. Um, yeah, I mean, there's people that just use cars. They're, they're appliances to them. There's no reason for them to have cars that are, you know, gas burners or... Oh, I, my shovel is right here the whole time. I really have been recording too long. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's no reason for them to have cars that are not efficient, uh, and we're getting better about that. I think a large percentage of the vehicles being purchased now for people of just commuting purposes are more efficient than ever, and we're we're slowly shifting over to using more and more efficient vehicles for that purpose. Uh, that is the biggest impact we could make in the automotive front. It's a uh, Oh, good job, Torch. It's a real complicated thing, you know. It's not just it's not just cars. It's not just the automotive industry. Uh, as, as a people, we need to do better at at um, living more sustainably and whatnot, not being so uh, wasteful. And you know, the plastic epidemic. There's 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 a lot of factors, but I think the automotive part is a is a big part of it. I just want to see us focus on the big picture rather than the small picture because it might seem like it's easy to attack the automotive enthusiasts and you know racing and that kind of stuff portion whereas the actual biggest impact can be in getting rid of the 
millions and millions of cars burning gas every day for reasons of simply navigating around, simply getting places. Um, there, yeah, just, there's just no reason. There is no reason why those cars couldn't be electric uh, and why that electricity can't be derived from safe and, you know, economically sensible uh, sources. The, the reason for myself defending the use of, you know, gasoline-powered cars is that it's for personal enjoyment, it's for, it's for hobby, it's for motorsport and things like that. Uh, and that is that is a very a very very small percentage of the global picture. I'm not really asking for sacrifice. I'm not asking for people, you know, uh, give up your um, gas-powered cars on your commute so that us people that are you know interested in motorsport or uh, automotive enthusiasts can have our cars and you know <laughs> you know you can just suck it. I really do think electric cars are better for that purpose. There's no reason not to. Once we get the range good enough and the technology is good uh, and we stop making cars, electric cars that are fan statements and we start making them that are just, you know, appliances, it's going to be great. There's a lot of... Oh, there's the floating island, so we're not too terribly far. Uh, there's a lot of other factors that, uh, that go along with that, though. And one of the things I get worried about is is that shift of opinion that uh, people that, you know, still hold on to their gas-powered cars or people that still like, you know, racing and things like that are, are bad people and hate the environment. Uh, I, I think it can be a two-way street. It doesn't have to be a one-way street there. So, do I think it's the future? At this point, yes, but we don't know what technology is going to look like in the future that could that could very easily change and there could be uh, better things than even you know just battery powered cars out there um i think a huge benefit is to just cut down on our commuting we we spend a lot of time on the road for no reason you know we we put a lot of people out on the roads for their jobs hey i found them uh for the sake of commuting to work when most of that could have been done at home I think working from home is is very advantageous and something that is maybe something we should be uh, focusing on a lot. Uh, there's a lot of factors there, and it's very hard. It's really hard to even have this conversation and not just sound super uh, defensive or... No need to be mad. <laughs> yeah, there's no need to sound like that. Um... Yeah, there's there. It's hard to, uh, it's hard to get that point across without sounding just uh, defensive of of my hobby. I just really do believe that there's a way we can we can have both. We can all be happy, and we can take better care of the planet. Um, how how we do that moving forward? I don't know. I don't know. In a perfect world, to me. Maybe electric car racing is a part of the future, and I'm not against it being its own thing. But to me, if we hold on to our gas burning cars for sport and things of like you know racing nature, uh, we can we can still enjoy an old fashioned technology without making such a big impact on the environment. Um, we can still find joy in the sound of a of a you know, gasoline combustion engine or whatnot without having to drive it every day and without having to waste so much fuel uh, and having to burn, you know, and make so much carbon dioxide and stuff like that. Um, if, if the use of gasoline-powered cars was reduced down to purely sport and for, for hobby, it would it would make that impact so very, very small that it would be basically a non-issue uh, we really then be looking at how do we produce electricity at a at a more efficient rate uh, that would be then the the next big topic of discussion i hope that's the way it goes in the future and i hope it doesn't come down to instead of just embracing 
electric cars as appliance and as necessity and as um, the preferred commuter car way and uh, in that reducing the environmental impact of traveling uh, I hope it 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 goes that way instead of the way that I kind of see happening somewhat in the uh, attack gasoline powered engine cars and uh, just use the um, you know people that, that like those cars as as an example I guess as to you know why they're bad because it's really a bad example it, it really is a bad example it, you could you could do much better by um, reducing the impact of the of the commuter car does that make sense I hope so I hope so let's see was there anything else in that list not really that was kind of it for the car stuff I wish I could have gotten to that one first because I feel like I'm <laughs> I'm not maybe as uh, elegant with my words now as I was <laughs> six hours ago when I started this um, but uh, yeah it's certainly something I'm very passionate about and if it's a if it's a topic that maybe I didn't do a great job of covering uh, hopefully we can return to it someday and uh, and do a better job of, of going over it. I'm a bit worried that it's getting dark out. Do I have a bed on me? I don't. Okay. Uh, we'll have to see how that goes. I need to get out to 1500 before I make my way to 3500 negative. Or 3300? Somewhere like that. Can I just find a swamp village? Is that what I see? Oh, it's so dark and dangerous out here. What is that? No, seriously, what is that? What is this building? What is this structure? Don't drown, horse. Don't drown. Don't kick me off, either. What have I found here? What is this? Ooh, it's dangerous out here. Oh, uh, get back on your horse, come. Get back on your horse. Okay, let's... Let's... Let's wait till morning to discover these things. They hurt my horse. They hurt my horse. What the f was that? What was that? Was it a phantom? Is that what a phantom is? I've never seen a phantom before. I'm I'm spooky scared now. I did not need that right now, though. I could tell you that much. I assume that was a phantom. Where the horse at? Okay, the horse is fine. Horse is fine. Eh, I've never seen such a thing. Oh, that's scary. Eat your apple. Eat your apple. Holy, those are scary. I knew about them, but I've never seen them. Oh, he hit the tree. He hit the tree. Okay. Whew. Okay, how do you get rid of these things? Arrows, maybe? Oh, hit him. Coming in for another tank. It's dead. Okay. All right. Now things are calming down. The sun's coming up. I do want to see what this is over here, though. I think what it is is a early attempt of a of a witch farm. I didn't realize anybody had been out this far though to try something like that. I know Brian's got his witch farm kind of way over by Guano Farm. Uh, this is not anywhere too close to that. Will you cross this? I think so. Old, uh, old skeleton horse took some serious damage there. Oh, is that a slime farm? Ah, that's what that is, isn't it? It's a slime farm. Okay. I don't know who done this, but interesting. Oh, yeah, look at this, uh, furnace and workbench out here. Yeah, someone's been here. We still got quite a ways to go to get home, though. And, um, I'm ready to be home because this has been... This has been quite a trip. <laughs> uh, quite a journey this week. A couple more quick questions to, to get through. Well, not really terribly quick questions. Uh, Commander Sealand, have you had a relationship with someone you felt like could be the one? If so, why did things not work out? Wow. You went for the real, <laughs> the real hard questions, didn't you? <laughs> it wasn't a contest. It wasn't a contest to see who could find the hardest question, you know. 
Um, this one, I will answer with yes. The second part of that, though, I you you've done it. You've found something that is a hard enough question and a personal enough question that it's not something that I'm comfortable with answering. <laughs> uh, that that's impressive. It takes a lot. Trust me. <laughs> um, the the short of it is that it was it was sad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, vagueness. It was sad. Okay, moving on. Um, what was the last one that I wanted to do? Oh, Caswell had a very funny question. Actually, two funny questions. One of them was, do you cry more or less in the shower than Sims Cone? Uh, less. Uh, I'm much more a bed crier than a shower crier. Uh, <laughs> um, the next one that he had was an interesting one uh, and kind of funny. If you lived during World War II, what job, role, or position would you want to take uh, or that you think would be the best balance of your skills uh, and contribute uh, contribution to the war and your personal survivability? Personally, I would want to be an aircraft rigger or mechanic. Uh, well, for me, I mean, being an asthmatic, anything that involved physical activity, I'm going to be really bad at. They're not going to want me, and I would not survive at. So, uh, any of those would uh, would be not not too great. Hello, house. Um, I do have a really good, you know, mechanical eye. I'm very good with uh, picking up on how to fix things and how things work. So, uh, that would be good. Also, something more like um, strategy, like strategist. Strategist, yes. You really sell it, Cone, when you say things like strategist. Okay, so yeah, I would be a mechanic. <laughs> uh, I would not be good on the front lines, that's for sure. Not just for health reasons, but I just don't think I would be very good at um, morally overcoming some of that. You know, you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, I would have problems with that. Uh, yeah, you can just kind of chill down here. Yeah, you did okay, horse. You did okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think that's probably very much so in line with, with how things would go for me. I would, I would end up being the repair guy, you know, fixing things, that kind of, that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, that is an interesting question. I like the idea of that question a lot. That's a cool one. I need to find what I did with the shulker box. I'm a little worried at the moment that I don't know where it is. Because I thought when I started this trip, I had it on me. And then somewhere in the middle of the trip, I realized I didn't have it on me. And that makes me worried. That makes me worried that I set it down somewhere. And it's now gone forever. And I'm again six or seven or eight emeralds short. Let's hope that's not the case. I really do hope that's not the case. That would be... That would even... That would be harder to take than any of these questions were. <laughs> Is it in here? No. Oh, we have one emerald in there. Oh no. Oh no. There it is. Oh, why would you put it there, Cone? Why would you do that? <laughs> All right, that gives me 24. Two extra, actually. 24. Well, that's good. That's good. Gave myself a nice fright in there, but um, we have the correct amount of emerald ore now to buy the really cool bow, which will be neat. We'll do that the next time we can uh, uh, find Pack Rat on the server. I hope you guys enjoyed the question week, the answer and question week, the question and answer week, the AMA week, whatever. The question's still out there who JY is, or if that happened by chance. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the hard questions today. I know for the first half, like before I had to stop, I think those were some really, really good and interesting topics, and I, I enjoyed giving you answers on them. So uh, hopefully this has been interesting to watch, and uh, next week we'll get back into doing some building. Thank you as always for watching, and I will see you next time. Blah, 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 blah,